Hello, in the following video we're going to be looking at pencil and wash technique designed to help you loosen up with your watercolour painting. I'll explain the process as we go through the video, but first let's see what we're going to paint. So here we are in uh, Berry Pomroy, which is between uh, Totnes and New Nabbot, and it's a beautiful day. And uh, what better scene could you wish for than this? We've got the shadows falling across the road, that beautiful old tree there just waiting to be painted. So that's fine. Let's get on with the drawing. And this is the scene we'll be painting. I'm just going to start off the drawing with a few lines before I start adding tone with my graphite stick 4B graphite stick the paper I'm using is uh, an Arches hot pressed smooth paper satin surface and is good for drawing it's a little bit akin to cartridge paper heavy cartridge paper and it's in a block so that when we come to paint, we won't get too much buckling. I'm just going to use the end of the stick now to block in some tones. And cover quite a large area doing this. I'm just pointing to some graffito lines that I made er earlier with the end of the pencil, the chrome edge of the pencil. Um, these will show up later in the painting as you'll see um, quite good for getting negative detail I'm kind of working away from the center of the painting um, just letting the composition evolve uh, from the center of interest As you saw from the photograph, there's a lot of detail in this scene. I'm trying to minimize that. Um, it's not always a good thing to put all the detail in. So we're suggesting as much as we can without overdoing it. Sitting perilously by the side of the road. <laughs> as you can see, I'm keeping those pencil lines spontaneous and fresh trying to create some movement and freedom in the lines that I'm drawing You can begin to see now the variation in tonality and also the textural marks which vary as well as the tones. I'm not going to finish all this today. Um, it is, besides being sunny, very cold. <laughs> and um, I'm going to finish off the rest of the drawing in the studio. But I'm going to get down the nuts and bolts of it first. So there we are, that's it for now. And there is the final drawing, all ready to be painted. You can see those lively pencil marks, everything's there, the tonality's there, there's texture. 
So here we are in the makeshift studio ready to paint. We can either do this end plain air or sometimes I work in the studio. Um, I'm actually working from memory here. Um, the two sky, sky blues I'm using are cerulean blue and the king's blue light which is an old holland colour. The king's blue light being a sort of grey tone which adds a kind of warmth to the cerulean, takes a bit of acidity away from the greenness. And as I come down towards the horizon, I float in some cobalt violet light to add yet more warmth to the sky. Just mopping up a few puddles there. These earth colours are actually Old Holland Earth Green, Yellow Ochre, and some Naples Yellow. Still keeping the washes fairly loose at the moment, sort of adding in general colour, no attempt at detail, letting some of those reds and yellows blend into each other, let the watercolour flow. And you can see how the drawing underneath is holding the whole thing together. some gold ochre and yellow ochre going into the colour of the tree there. When you're using graphite stick, initially your first washes may be repelled, especially by some of the heavier pencil tones. But as you go through the painting and you add more washes, you tend to find that they'll start to adhere. These colours are a mixture of yellow ochre, Naples yellow, gold ochre. Just really blocking in areas of colour at the moment. As I remember, the scene was a fairly limited palette, bathed in this sort of yellow ochre tones, sort of added a homogenous look to the whole scene. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm going in with my King's Blue Light to highlight the distant hills.
quite a creamy grey blue very nice for mid-tone blues same colour for the side of the house I began this method of painting some years ago when <coughs> I wanted to loosen up with my own watercolour painting and it brought very good results uh, especially with the tonal drawing now the tonal drawing is a bit like a safety net if you like you can splash away with your colours and the drawing tends to hold everything together I filled up several sketchbooks one summer doing nothing but this and gradually informed on more finished paintings I was able to go back in the studio with a little bit more freedom if you're going to try this technique I suggest you get out there with your sketchbooks and paint merrily away until something happens hopefully the result will be that it'll give you that freedom and spontaneity with your watercolours you may find that this is the kind of technique that you want to use all the time it does bring very nice spontaneous results and I think they make paintings in their own right see now that as I go through the painting I'm starting to add a little more detail with the brush I've blocked in most of the tonal areas using uh, a red ochre there with yellow ochre create the orange of the roofs This is darker colour I'm introducing, which is a mixture of hooker's green and French ultramarine, but again blending those colours, letting them go where they want, adding in some orange, keep it free, keep it loose, the drawing is still holding your painting together. same mixture of blue green for those branches tree trunks working wet in wet now 
see how the darker washes tend to obliterate to a degree the pencil lines underneath although they're still there drawing now beginning to look like a painting the thing I love about this technique is that because you can be free with your washes you get these lovely happy accidents that are so distinctive in watercolour Standing in a few tutties here and there. You can see now how the paint is beginning to adhere over the pencil lines. I'm not going to paint in too many of those branches. I think the pencil lines are enough, really. Just the larger ones. now for some spatter work just to add some more textures into the hedgerows I'm using one of my what I call my sawn off oil painting brushes and I've also cut the bristles down to make a sort of stipple brush Spatter work not only adds texture but adds life and movement to the paint surface. Like quite deep shadow on the wall there. I do love it when the painting starts to take on a 3D effect, taking you into the picture plane. You can see the difference in strong tonality in the foreground compared to the blue of the distant hills. Red ochre going in there just to give it 
give a bit of spice to the colour. You can see now that it's it's becoming a painting rather than a drawing. The drawing is being sort of left behind, if you like. Now for those lovely shadows. Mixture of Cerulean French Ultra. Now that the loose aspect of the painting is done in my initial washes, I can now afford to be more detailed with my strokes, especially with these shadows. width of the shadows now getting wider as we come to the foreground to add a sense of spatial distance. Thank you cameraman. Painting's nearly there now. Yet another tone on the side of the building. Starting in a mixture of the King's Blue Light and a little bit of red ochre in there, just sort of add a few tree accents, shadows. there now. What I'm doing is taking my dip pen with some ink, watercolour ink, just to add in a few branch details. So there we are, the finished painting. You can still see the lovely 
lively pencil marks, the textures, it's all there as a painting. And here are some more paintings I did using the same technique. 